<laughs> yeah, get from there. Hi. Hey, thanks, Leisho. Um, so, as I said, I've been working with Leisho since his first show, which was last September. And I think we've always been asked. So, this is really nice um, to actually see smiles and, and faces. Um, this is Leisho's second show for the gallery, and um, it's quite spectacular because his first show was in a, in a smaller room, with a smaller piece of room. This time around, we have the pleasure of seeing the larger pieces um, that he's been working on. Um, this was meant to be sort of a guided artist talk slash tour. Um, I'm going to leave it up to Alicia to decide how he wants to um, uh, present his works. But um, I just also want to just thank him for being such a great person for the past year, an artist, and for actually allowing this space to show his works for the first time, I think, in Chicago, right? Yeah, yeah. so it was a, quite a coup, I think, for the, for the gallery, um, um, for us to, just, to get to know each other over the past year. Um, I'm going to turn it over to you, right? Um, yeah. to talk, or do you want to introduce yourself or, uh, to the world? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the format to even have my work showing. Um, I'm very honored by that. Um, I'm really very happy to share these books. Um, I am not sure how back are in terms of uh, what I need to start talking about. But I can I can talk, start by talking about the title. So the mm -hmm. title of that band is a Jamaican kind of invention. The language um, plays on, I mean, from a statement I wrote, I don't remember the name exactly, but um, one word out comes from kind of queer language and bad coming from a cultural one that talks about masculinity, talks about badness, talks about um, resistance in a kind of way. Um, but of course, most of my work is kind of embedded in context of the dance of the dance of being a culture or a framework of kind of understanding self. Um, and that self is then injected into history, it's, it's injected into gender, it's injected into race. Um, and that basically becomes my starting point for most of my work that I'm working on. I think a lot about interiorities. I think about a lot about um, the invention of art the realization of identity post-colonial. Um, I have, of course, think about sexuality as a place that, um, how do we navigate space? How do we understand ourselves in certain spaces? And, of course, self-investigation. Um, three of the larger pieces in the show um, started with Anansi. And the reason why I've chosen to kind of work from that standpoint is to um, I'm questioning, I'm questioning Anansi as both as a, as a cultural signifier, but also as a place of um, reinvention or the creation of a kind of black, black mytholo mythology. Um, and of course, there are various iterations of Anansi. And so I kind of think about it kind of uh, that is that, um, is that word I'm looking for? That, multiplicity in terms of what it is to become the starting point of most of these works that I've been doing. So for example, this one, um, I think it's titled, um, I can't remember the title. Um, <laughs> yeah, because you're really going to- I know, I know, I know. Descriptive that. titles, that's okay. Um, <laughs> rules, rules of being free or something. Right. Yeah. Um, and I mean, the, 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 the approach in all of the works that talks about Anansi is really, they are a site of a kind of happening. I think of them as, as a point of intimacy um, between two males. Um, simply because I kind of think about my own history as it relates to that. And I'm always in this constant search for history of affirm affirmations about um, the queer identity, especially relates to um, black and post-colonial because 
without my within my research, I mean, it's it's almost it's very it's you can't find any solid evidence that this happened, and it's kind of ironic also in terms of the awareness now that we have around queerness. It doesn't happen or it never existed in in a in a in a post colonial kind of culture, um, and it's also there's there's a kind of a biomythographic aspect of it. I think about my own kind of coming on of age. Um, I think about the spaces where I grew up, like in the bush or in the country, um, where um, I think I was reading Kyle Miller's book um, poem on that's titled "Nearby Bushes." It's, you know, it's it culturally there's a lot of death. There's a lot of mystery. It's almost like it's an impenetrable place. This this uh, nearby bushes, which is really you know, just a lot of foliage, it's just a place where there isn't civilization. And I'm kind of using that as a site for these occurrences to happen. Um, and I use the body in a kind of, in a tussle. It could either be sexually charged or it can be violently, it could be um, a fight. But the idea is that um, that's all kind of reflects the same kind of energy, I'd say, um, but it's just, you wouldn't necessarily see the evidence of two men engaged in the same kind of thing. And, you know, I'm using that as, as a kind of dichotomy. There's a lot of, there's a lot of dichotomies in my work. Um, but specifically, I'm looking at the NNC as it relates to queerness, how it's kind of depicted and how it's understood, um, both as a place of non-existence, because a lot of people have to sexuality to protect themselves, but also how it happens in a space without one's awareness. Um, so can I ask you a sure. question? So I like this idea of the bush and like the intimacy sort of outdoors. Queer intimacy sort of happening in public out, outdoors where we usually think of queer intimacy happening within a confined space. Um, is this something that is specific to Jamaica for queer uh, people to allow themselves or to be able to express their queerness um, only within sort of the bush, like in the outdoors? Or, I mean, is it more restrictive like, to do it within, inside, like a space? Yeah, I mean, there is, there is the site, of course. Uh, the, 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 the exactness of what bush is, mm. but it also is a kind of metaphor because mm. if you want to think about the sugarcane fields, that could also be a bush. Mm. You know, it's 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 designed, but it's still a kind of a place, a beginning place. So yes, of course, uh, when you go to parties, they're in the bush. <laughs> um, it, it, it it happens really a lot in front of you, but without their awareness. You know, if you're not a part of that club, you just won't see it or mm. you, you don't know it exists. Mm. And that's kind of like just that space in which we inhabit a lot. Um, we inhabit in place of of being invisible and invisible at the same time. Um, and that's kind of like why it's so significant. Um, yeah, but also because, you know, as I, I was saying, you know, the, it could be the sugar canes because then I also think about historically why we're in the Caribbean. You know, we're in fear uh, because to enjoy the bush and the nature. We're, we're actually placed here to be a, a, a workhorse for this product, this crop. Mm -hmm. um, but it, and of course, for me, then it also becomes a site of having to navigate both spaces, both physically and invisibly. Um, because, you know, but I won't go any further into yeah, that. Yeah. I think maybe like the next painting over there, like um, it's called Buck Break, isn't it? Buck Break. Yeah. yeah. Um, can you talk about the title? Uh, because the title, uh, I don't think a lot of people know sort of that reference to what Buck Break actually means. <laughs> so this is sort of like insight into, um, you know, this painting, but also um, at the title itself, right? Sure. I mean. So let me go in depth because I did explain it to someone before 
Um, so we know what a book is in, 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 uh, in Western history. A book is is a kind of nail. Um, a book, it can be actually just black nail um, in probably the Jim Crow era or you know in the Caribbean. Um, but it's it's a particular type of masculinity. It's the same. It's the, it's the scary one. It's the offensive one. But, you know, it's it would be considered probably an Adonis. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're the kind of ex example of what an Adonis is, but it's definitely a, a, a black male who is aggressive or seen as an, almost like an alpha male. Um, but then it's also clear the word backbreak, um, which in itself means something. But there's a dance that we call Prokafi Bach, which is, which is, it's a dance, but it's, it, it, it describes back breaking. And it's just, you know, it could be a kind of, Anthony, you, what is Prokafi Bach again? What is it like a, yeah, it's like, uh, you know, yeah. it's like, like there's a, there's choreography to it. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I, I just wanted to make an announcement of that kind of choreography because the, the legs, the limbs almost jut out. Similarly to that of a spider. Um, but then I was also thinking about kind of like the, the suggestion of your back being broken, either through toiling or through performing. And you know, it's, it's this performance of masculinity, it's this performance of, of self, of the everyday. Um, that's, you know, there is no kind of ease, um, there's this kind of pressure to uphold oneself. And somebody else in certain instances. Um, so that's kind of like. I mean, there's there's also something for me yeah. about the title, sure. about this idea of like the the plot, right? And then and then juxtaposing it with like the dance, you know, within sort of this queer space, it's also it's almost like, you know, we are queering that figure of the book as they're engaging in the dance itself, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's a, there's also this sort of power of yeah. play. It's a performance of masculinity. It's, it's the performance of the book. Yeah. And it's that, yeah. Um, so like, in a lot of ways, you're referencing this historicity, but then you're bringing it back to like, right now, yeah. in, in that dance hall space, where like, you know, men can engage, you know, in that way, but also be, you know, in some ways, Dominate if they want to be, or submissive if they want to be. Right. So, I mean, right? and that's something you definitely see in our course. So, <laughs> we, we take on these roles, right? Yeah. We perform a more, uh, what's the word? A submissive role? Mm -hmm. We take on a more aggressive role. Mm -hmm. And that's interchangeable. So, yeah. Definitely. So, that's what, when I see this, oh. I, I see sort of like that, the interplay between dominance and submission, like, right? Um, and the title for me is like the most fantastic part of it because it's like a, it's a double entendre. You have to kind of like think about it for a minute, <laughs> and then and then you can see the dance going on <laughs> too. And also, um, it could be a social dance. It could be a social, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, do you want to move to the short this thing here? Oh, let's get up with a light UV. So this one for me, I love the title, and I, I want you to say that to, the, to everybody in the universe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> love, compact for gentleness. Yes. So what is, I mean, when you first presented this to me, I was like, oh, there's not, there's not anything going on, right, like in the, in, in, in the landscape, in the bush. Um, and you say it could, it could be, but like, so I want to hear from you, like what is actually sort of like what you what you were trying to uh, grapple with when you're creating. Well, in a way, unlike the book break, it's it's less dynamic in terms of what the figures are. Like in my mind, it's more the figures that are at rest mm -hmm. versus um, being engaged. It could be the aftermath, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, but it's ideas that, I, like I'm envisioning or are recalling. A kind of a moment in the bush of stillness. And I mean the painting is quite dynamic, but the figures are kind of kind of horizontal in that way. Um, 
you want to think about um, what's his name, um, Gogan's, um, you know, that painting he did with uh, the death resting. I can't remember exactly, but he did a painting where there's this figure kind of lounging, right. and it was kind of like. It, remember that painting we had last year called Gogan's Girl? It's yeah. actually kind of like yeah. that. Um, but that's what the figures are doing. But in my mind, it's it's kind of like it's it's when it's just, it's like when when time it's ending. It's an end of something. Um, and you know, this is almost if, this is almost the dawn to the exiting. It's kind of like you're like you're realizing and then kind of rebirthing into the real world. So what's happening to the figures is the reason why it's kind of talking about forgetfulness is because what's happening in the fish stays in the fish. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like then it doesn't go further than just mythology. It doesn't exist after the fish. Is that partly because of like um, the social context of, of where this is happening, like it has to stay in the bush. I mean, it is a sad piece. But yeah. I mean, it's it, it's the lights and, and colors say something else, but it's really, I don't know if it, I mean, if you've been to Caribbean, you understand, but there is this time when the sun is coming down, when everything kind of, kind of is aware that night's coming. That's how it feels like. Like it's this, it's this moment into stillness, and yes, it's the social construct of that. It's a, you know, it's but it, you know, it's also this thing. I think for me, it's also the fear of something beautiful happening to never be shared and never be known that it happened. Um, yeah. Okay, that chills, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in a lot of ways, it's, it's really, you know, like, as you said, it's very sad um, that, um, that this is where this moment could ever be, right? Um, and then you, and these bodies just kind of move away from it afterwards, and maybe never see each other again. Yeah. Or maybe they do, but then we speak of it, just like that, right? Um, I think they call that, like, the twilight hour, is that right? Like sort of like that, that yeah. that moment yeah. between like day moving into into night. Um, well, that gives me a sort of a, a better sense. Of this. <laughs> <laughs> originally, I mean, honestly, I, I was just like, oh, look, like, these are kind of like these naughty figures, like doing, you know. But then the way that you describe it, it's like ah, it's actually coming to an end, right? Yeah. Um, what they've done is, has, has now been completed and it's time to like, sort of move on. <laughs> um, <sighs> just gave me like, oh shit, <laughs> the chills of yeah. it. Um, so, indeed, you know, like, moving from these, like, really sort of outdoors pieces, um, your first show, you know, I kind of think about it, and I feel like a lot of the work, you know, um, there were silhouettes, they felt like they were inside a, a particular space. And these ones, I feel like they're, you know, you're moving into sort of the outdoors. They're, you're coming out from the like inside, and you see sort of like the shirt candies and whatnot. Um, do you see that progression from like your first, like the first show that you did here? Into like one of these newer, like they kind of still look similar, right? And, and, and look, they have the that silhouette relation, that relationship to silhouette and, and blackness and body. But um, I, you know, we didn't see any of like these yeah. sort of, like yeah. organic. I think the reason why that happened was um, these these happened a lot earlier than. So this, mm. I, this one especially, that one, those happen when I was still in grad school, still post lockdown. Mm. Especially this one, like, I didn't finish this one until I got my new student space. Mm-hmm. So there are things that I was asking myself. So for example, I use the kind of, 
There's sugar cane in the portrait, but it's just um, it's it's less. It's, it's starting to break, and I, I think for me I was kind of thinking about what would happen if yeah, you know, if it was also in the space around the figure or the portrait. And I you know just just quickly I just did that because I wanted to see what would happen, and I just kept it because you know if it's if it's definitely a coming out of the bush, it's that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is kind of like how the portraits work in terms of in comparison to the Adams pieces. They are, in, they are, they could be described as as um, moments are that happen. But I wanted to take in consideration the individual, as in this person in this particular space and time. Ironically, this piece titled "Look." On forgetfulness, and this one is titled See and Die Here, okay? which is it's a philosophy in a certain way because um, it's especially coming down to like crime, violence culture in Jamaica. Um, we're talking about um, seeing or encountering something probably in the bush, but it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. um, so it's See and Die Here. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you speak about like the the particular like figures within these portraits. I mean, are they based off of real people that use that, or are they sort of essences of like various people? Definitely essences. Mm -hmm. um, I want to think that if this is a person in this instance, in the next frame, they're a different person. Right? They, they kind of become something else. Um, so this is not just a synopsis of like the person. As a reflection of themselves, but definitely as a cycle, like as this once this person experience, you know, also is an effect what what they are describing. So it's never just. I think with that it can actually be mapped onto different types of people, different types. But it's just this is the specific instance in which this person is experiencing this. Okay. So this is. So the title may reflect why the the, the eye figuration oh. is, is really large, or like uh, you're kind of making it ironic. Yeah, I'm making it ironic because here's the thing: like this is why, like I I think about the silhouette so specifically mm -hmm. because a silhouette can describe a person, but it doesn't describe on the, on the surface, right? Mm -hmm. So. Here's this blank space, but there is this also this fake space around the person. So if you want to think about humanizing people or dehumanizing people, you kind of start to think about what you can connect yourself to. So for example, a quick silhouette of a person is all that is definitely a head and a shoulder. And if it wasn't that, then you would not you would not be thinking of this person as you So that becomes kind of like the device. And I play with that. Mm -hmm. Like for example, this one, it doesn't have that. The, the, the shape of the shoulder and the head is different. Yeah. Um, this is satisfy my soul, right? Two. Yeah. Two. So satisfy my soul to I wanted an afro head. So that's what you're seeing. That's mm -hmm. why there's this very spherical thing. But of course, you know, you know, depending on where you're standing looking at somebody, it can change how the person looks in terms of a silhouette. So that moment of kind of escape, the moment escapes a kind of humanity. Mm -hmm. I can use that as my advantage to kind of play and kind of manipulate what this person looks like. And it made us escape that completely. The idea is that we want to take away recognition from them. Are they still human? Mm -hmm. um, or what do you, in your understanding of the human, what, what are you seeing? Um, and I think it's at these instances, people, you, you know, you think about race and culture and sexuality. Um, what is it then that you recognize? What are you seeing? You know, and what are these frameworks for humanity? You know, mm -hmm. um, and I think that's kind of like objectivity of these portraits. So in some ways, you're trying to sort of like picture in like the these these things that are on. Unpicturable, right? Like these sort of like interiorities um, that we we want to read on the 
the surface, but you're you're making us work for it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? right? And you should. Yeah. You know, I think it's at that point, you know, it's you fall you fall prey to stereotype and perceptions. And you know, probably white supremacy are the, those are the instances when all those demons that have built your built your understanding comes up. Because mm -hmm. then you're faced with it. And that's kind of like to me that's that's when you can definitely say, okay, I know how to I have the thing you have the power to to kind of force its own sense of humanity on you. Or you can break that sense of what you think. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I really see the, the, the bit being very subversive and being very, and it has a, a queer sensibility because, like, in a lot of ways, as queer people, like, we have to sort of read these cues, right, and try to figure out uh, the other person for these cues that they're sort of given, whether it's like subtle or like overt, right? Um, but what you're doing, you're, what you're doing that for your painting and you're making others will may not be queer, they actually experience that sort of like work of actually trying to, to, to read the surface or read like these cues that um, that maybe like queer people are a little bit more used to because they, <laughs> we have to find you know? yeah, 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 of course. We I mean, have to find community in each other. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. And I think for me too, you know, it kind of talks about my own kind of struggle because um I have to a lot of time reassess what it means to be queer because even though it escapes a lot of people because you know they assume that once you kind of fit a kind of thing then that's you're not then you are obvious. And like I've been asked if I'm queer several times because I've been here and it pisses me off because there is this kind of reprogramming happening, there is this kind of new norm. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean I don't express myself in, in, in how people express themselves now because I, I didn't go no. Mm -hmm. But um, it challenges me and it kind of drives me nuts because I think we're so used to being in the mainstream now because queerness was never mainstream ever. And it kind of really even destroys the meaning of it. Mm -hmm. Queerness is, is not to fit into a box. Um, so you have to make opening or you have to be space for other queernesses to kind of Stuff, or join the line because yeah. then it's going to become everybody else, it's going to become normal, yeah. it's going to become a, a, a homogenous kind of thing that people can sell for us. That's really, um, really interesting that you said that because I think the argument when we, I mean, I think we're of the same generation, but like, um, the reason why, like, the old time queerness offers a lot of possibilities is that it feels inclusive, right? It's exactly. like a lot of different sense. But when you say, for example, Gay, or like, you know, really sort of narrow it down to a certain like, uh, moving nomenclature, then you start to sort of add all this baggage of right? like, you know, that that we might associate like being gay too, yeah. right? But now everyone's sort of just saying queer, queer, queer. Where is everything? Like, <laughs> like, what is that? I mean, does it it's sell currency, right? In um, what kind of currency does it have? And like, for you who's not the U.S. Like, how are you sort of reforming, you know, like reconfiguring that idea of queerness that has all this potential, but you're seeing is being almost co-opted yeah. <laughs> by the, the mainstream. Yeah. For it. So it's really been it's very interesting because it's like, like where do you see it then going? Like, I mean, it's not clear than what. <laughs> I mean, there are positives to it. I mean, you know, it's just the idea that, you know, people always think that queer people are this alien species. Um, but what's kind of happening is also that, you know, you're realizing that we are like everybody else. But the danger with that, too, is that it's becoming this club everybody can join, even if you don't. I mean, I guess that's good in some way, but then. You know, it, does it then nullifies the struggle before? You know, does it undermine them? Does it say, oh, you guys were just trying to be like everybody else? Mm -hmm. Or is it that I'm just trying to be an individual? Yeah. You know, I'm just trying to be in the presence and this is how I feel about something. 
result, I express myself. Um, do you think like these labels are are challenging for someone from like Jamaica because like there's so much at stake by claiming a particular like by, by claiming hey I'm queer or hey I'm gay <laughs> like as a Jamaican. I can tell you that I can I can talk about this openly because I'm here and not because I'm here. Like if I was in the Netherlands, <laughs> yeah, and it you know it could just be somebody in the gallery, like simple, because but once we shift space, then the capacities change, of course, um, and I can be. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean I have to use that opportunity to kind of talk about it because it's, it affects us in ways that we don't even understand. I mean I see the hierarchy. Purchase of that. Yeah. Um, are they are telling people because they don't have their past. I think like the piece behind you maybe speaks to speaks to that, right? Issue of like what does it mean to to feel both liberated and unshackled, but also still feel like constrained at the same time. Um if you have the record up there and then you have like the broken chains. Yeah. Um, and you said, oh, you know, like, you have a lot of that in your work. What about, why did you choose to make an installation of, like, um, you know, like, for this piece in particular? Um, okay. I think one of the things that I've been trying to do, especially for my earliest practices, is to Synthesize these situations are these pictorial situations that that forces people to ask or investigate their own beliefs. Um, I want to think in simplest terms what's happening on the stage in the case of instance of instance, including two men kissing. I think the fact that you can't really gender or describe what's happening here, but the drawing is probably much more explicit. Um, that's kind of like what I what I did. Um, but yes, um, you know, I think one of the challenges that I found myself is, you know, as a as a new I as I, I mean, how do I because like I think about the independence of America, right? Once we got independence, there was this kind of boom, this kind of new sense of self that we did then trying to kind of form. And it, you know, everything since this about creativity will be manifested versions. Uh, manifested versions of that. You know, and music is a great category of that. You know, when you think about ska, um, coming into rock steady, uh, coming into um, uh, dance hall and reggae. Um, you realize the conscious Content of music becomes almost the conscience or the consciousness of the people so, so there's these philosophies that every generation brings with them. Um, but consistently throughout all of them, we see ourselves as free, free black people. Um, but in every single one of them, it, it, it slowly describes what this freedom comes from. So for example, the dance that talks a lot about money and spending and um, what they're wearing. So that's a kind of freedom. Mm -hmm. um, Scott talks a lot about like, having fun. You know, um, a lot of them talk about kind of having the same thing as their European, but, you know, counterparts would have. But never in instance it talks about um, you know, two men. And, and it's you know it's complex. I mean it is complex, but here's the thing, like the reason why I did this is because I needed to see myself in this room. And queerness in blackness doesn't exist in the same space together. Or at least it doesn't happen in the way that I'd see myself. Um, and so I needed to create these situations where it's both embedded in history because are supposed to be escape, escape slaves. Um, you know, talking about a situation where it's only described to fables, but then only are, are able to be only described in writing or described in, in drawing. Um, 
So yeah, I mean, it's a kind of like a creation of a new human in a way, uh, a new version of myself. In history. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's. Uh, I think what you're talking about is sort of a recuperative sort of historical project, right? Of like trying. I mean, that's that's the foundation for a lot of like um, these new types of histories that are being sort of written about like queerness in various con in various locations that right? that we wouldn't necessarily think to like ask because like who are who's writing the history, right? Like there are people who don't look like us, who don't think like us, who aren't queer, right? Um so like I think like what you're doing, what I see you doing is like you want to sort of like ask the question, you know, where are queer folks like me in this historical narrative, yes. you know, and why aren't they being written about? Or, you know, why aren't the questions being asked? And what you're doing is you're sort of saying, hey, I'm going to ask the question, but I'm going to represent it as yeah. that question of the type of the installation of the Yeah, exactly. Right. exactly. exactly. Um, but on, on the flip thing, you know, on the other hand, I see you sort of asking this larger question of like, what is national identity? What is national identity, right? And how how does that inform citizen, like this idea of belonging or this idea of citizenship, right? Like, um, it's it's very constrained. It's very heteronormative, right? And part of maybe Jamaican national sort of identity is being informed by dance hall culture, which is in itself a very you know. Like, yeah, yeah, it's like, like, like yeah, like yeah, yeah. form of culture, right? Yeah. Um, so I think like the really kind of cool thing about in my opinion about this work is that you're trying to intersect all of these like really dense like like questions of like where am I in history? Where is queerness you know in history? Like why are people writing history the way they write? And how do I represent that as an artist? It's 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 another thing. You know, I mean yeah. that's like you know, these sort of like in, like these intersections that I don't think many people are really like asking, you know, unless they have to ask it. Like I understand that's what you're what's important to you. And I think it's easier to write that book. Yeah, yeah. And to even to, to, to represent it, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's almost it's almost do that, but I think the challenge is interesting. Um sort of so I, my question, my, maybe my last question for this is that, um, is there something about abstraction, like abstracting sort of like the, the, the bodies that, um, like why do you do it? Like, why abstraction? Why, you know, it's, it's that you're, you're sort of, you know, like all these black bodies are sort of abstracted, or faces, you know, like calling that. Um, What's your what's thinking behind that? You have to come to it. No, that's exactly <laughs> why. I mean, I have been my earlier practice are very, very much more visual fixed mm -hmm. things. I feel like, you know, it, it was doing the work for you, but I know I feel like the the best part of what art is you have to work for it. You have to come to it. I love that answer. Because you're just <laughs> like you're just like, nah, I'm not gonna teach you. No! You have to live with yourself, right? <laughs> Which is like no, which is the best answer because like I think that that's that's like the um, you're sort of pointing at privilege, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, like um, and in a lot of ways, like we're not meant to sort of educate everybody about all of these issues, or you're not as a artist. I really express it. So like, as a viewer, as a viewers, we all have to do the work. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, in the in. Earlier, I was critiquing um, abstraction as this thing that you have to come. Like, you know, just, I was thinking about the audacity that it occupies a space that is privileged in itself. And yeah. only people get to interact with it far from our class. Right. And so I thought if I created stuff that didn't have to be involved in a certain way, but I realized, I started realizing that once more I'm trying to educate or better myself, mm -hmm. I started to understand abstraction. Mm -hmm. And I think, 
that's the best part of it. It's like it's an education. You have to go to, and you know who's who's kind of excluded themselves from it. It just takes work for you to go there. Like you really just need to learn. Yeah. To understand it. There you go. Translations like big statement. You gotta do the work. You gotta do the work. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I respect that a lot. Um, do we want to go? In? There's one more piece that I'd like for you to talk about if we move into this thing. And it's, it's one of the few pieces that you have on canvas. Yeah. Right? But a lot of your pieces are, um, are works on paper mounted on canvas. But this one, Java, and the man looking back at sugar cane, yeah. Yeah. Um, is not on, is not works on paper. It's not a work on paper. It's directly on canvas. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about this piece? And like, it's, it, I mean, it's kind of like the outlier in a lot of ways. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, so the piece, Job one, um, my looking back at it. Okay, so I did three of them, right? Mm -hmm. I did three on canvas talking about the key. And this is was way prior to the paper pieces, working on paper, because there's this temper on it. Um, I, I mean, my trade, I know what I did on the mm -hmm. surface, but um, there's lots of layering. You know, there's paint and there's collage. Um, there's the stem body, there's charcoal, acrylic oil. The reason why, you know, it was kind of like building on art, it started, it's it's the point of kind of collapse. Um, I did some previous pieces on paper that kind of did very pictorial sugarcane and pictorial um, objects. And they're intersected in a very clear way. But this is where everything kind of is laid on top and it collapses. Mm -hmm. Um, there is definitely Hawaii would represent a sugar cane. Um, and the character that I invented is also very, very much in it. Um, job one kind of, the reason why I titled it Job one, I was thinking about, I was thinking about King Yellowman. So I grew up with Yellowman. So of course, Yellowman is an albino, mm -hmm. he's a DJ. But I was kind of thinking about um, this kind of, how he had to fight against um, his own kind of afflictions that, you know, his societal afflictions, uh, you know, both being discriminated because he's an albino and, you know, being a DJ probably is from the ghetto. Um, but it's this kind of, he does it on several poles. One, because, you know, so he's albinism, but then also he had contracted, I, he had cancer in his job. I remember him having this kind of, um, he was doing this interview and he was talking about I think this was right before or after the procedure when he started to talk again. Um, he was just talking about um, how important his job was for that. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I mean, it's that kind of audacity, this kind of spirit that, you know, is embedded in the work in a kind of way. Like, is this kind of emergence, you know, it's the idea is that the bodies are this person is emerging from the cane fields. If, if you want to think about the cane fields as this, as this kind of existence, you know, he's removing himself from this expectation of what is expected of him and kind of taking over his own um, destiny. You know, he's taking this in control. And, you know, it's, it's kind of like a, it's probably almost like a reflection of what I imagine myself kind of <laughs> doing. Um, I, I'm just trying to dispel a lot of perceptions around myself. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think just those uh, meta or references kind of just talks about what, it, what I wanted to do to convey. It sounds like maybe like uh, this piece sort of signifies agency. Yeah. Um, that despite all of these sort of afflictions and the stigma of being an albino, he still, you know, uh, moved forward basically, and basically is now looking back at like this sort of space of yeah. repression or yeah. like labor, yeah. forced labor, right? Yeah, yeah. And he's trying to dig himself out of the ghetto with what he's doing, his yeah. job, or 
<laughs> what is up? <laughs> you know, being a DJ. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't have any more questions. Do our guests have any questions for for Leisha? Um Anything pressing that has been on your mind? Or anything else on other pieces? Yeah, or, or other pieces. I mean, what has been this? I met Leisha when we're in Jamaica. Um, he had just, you know, started on, on his journey. But what do you what do you think has been sort of the reception to people back home and to your art? Because back then it wasn't this. No. Right. So what? What? Ha, have you heard? It? <laughs> no. No. I'm, I have heard it. It's it's, it's I'm a, fine to also not. It's a good. No, no, no. no. It's, you're right. No, the truth is, I I have always been. But it, you know, in one way, it's a burden, but I also think that it will be accepted. But the truth is, a lot of my truths are on these canvases, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure how people react. Right. Um, people have asked, people have made references, but you know, it's like, it's because they like what you're seeing now. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't think that it would ever undo what I used to do, but um, yeah, I mean, I haven't. <laughs> it's like, I was like I was, I haven't, I'm not even there yet. Uh, you um, know, COVID. Because I feel like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like your earlier work um, um, examined dance hall, but it was also a very heterosexual, in a very heterosexual way. Well, here's the thing. I, I'm glad you bring that up. Um, the idea then was definitely I'm hiding behind it. But I needed to kind of project what it's seen as because there's a different there's a difference between being in it, performing in it, it's you know, it's an everyday than seeing from a particular perspective. And I thought, you know, just the clarity of it, the fact that this has this very cartoony feel gives us a clarity in terms of what's happening in the section. You know, once you're on dance door and doing stuff, you don't really you can't lose yourself in it, right? Uh, but then, of course, there's these other things that are not talked about, you know, like, I don't want to go into it, but <laughs> it can be very aggressive and scary, right? Right. I mean, it's the whole, but it's it's spiritual too, but it's like, you know, there's just other things that we haven't really started. And I, I always kind of think of myself in proxy to it, you know, what, you know, me being who I am, um, being there, participating. Um, it can just be enjoyment on the surface, um, but then, of course, you think about how much you kind of make yourself invisible, um, and it's complete contrast when you go to like a game party. Because on a game party, you can play any role you want, right? Mm -hmm. But it's of course, then you can go on dance out doing what you're doing in game party. It's just a, a, a recipe for the for danger, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it's just. Also, there's so many other things involved in that. You know, I was thinking about how are we kind of assessing how we relate to each other. Um, you know, once you're, if you're male or female, and you know, it, you know, it, I wanted to kind of talk about how masculinity is is presented in a particular way because it's not like it's no we hear a lot of violence happening in Jamaica, people are like, oh my God, what is wrong with our men? I'm like, the truth is our men have always been violent. Mm -hmm. So when it comes out to being an mm -hmm. actual act of violence, how can you then not assess yourself? Because mm -hmm. that's what's happening. So in a way, that's kind of like what I was thinking about. I was just thinking about this very, very aggressive masculine space and what it is actually saying morally, you know, um, spiritually, who we see ourselves. And of course, you know, I think in that same way, it kind of talks about the attitudes around femininity and, and, and you know, women. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but there's, just to add to that too, I mean, like there's this, I've seen some of your earlier pieces, yeah. <laughs> even before, you know, like you stepped into the gallery. Yeah. And like, there's a way of like thinking of, oh, because now I know you, right? And, I look back at like your work and I go, oh, you know, he's totally still doing this the, the type of work that like 
we're seeing right now, but it's it's maybe a little more subtle, or maybe like you know you have to pay more attention because of the subtlety, right? Um, you know, there's some some figures that I've seen, you know, like um, that you've done in the past that are you know that's totally like gay, right? Or you know, or, or like he's doing something very like you know like you know queer here, but like if you weren't you know, if you weren't, part, you know, if you're not part of that sort of like that, that community or like if you weren't looking for it or, you know, don't have the language to identify some of those things, then it might seem like you're just doing something very, you know, well, objective. Yeah, something. well, that's, I mean, mm-hmm. that's part of what I relied on. I relied on people's ignorance. I, <laughs> no, it's true. I knew I had to because that's how. We, that's how you can navigate a space like that. Exactly. Like people see things happening and they don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's it's just using the work in the same way. Um kind of just navigating the spaces. Yeah. So, so it definitely subverts a lot of things that people may perceive as masculine, but it's actually quite clear or gay. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I also think, I mean I mean that, that that's also a really great sort of like maybe if, you know point too is that like your your trick you know like these questions are, are can you know keep coming and they're they're consistent but your way of sort of asking or representing it are moving into like you, you know you're not stuck right you're not sort of you know, staying put but you're actually moving into sort of these exciting other spaces and aesthetics and, and media right um and performance might be like one of those, you cool. know, new sort of yeah. arenas where like now you're actually using your your full sort of physical self yeah. to actually, exactly. you know, interrogate some of these larger questions, yeah. right? Um, so I guess I'm excited for that. <laughs> <laughs> so many yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> Stay tuned. You know. um, any other? I have a question. Yeah. yeah. Um, you were just talking about how this piece was one of the few that you have included that's actually on campus. And I'm thinking about the last show you had here too, where most of these images have been mounted on campus. You know, the way in which you crop them, you seem to leave a little bit of space so that you can see the canvas that goes around it. And so I was thinking of these as being sort of transplanted into these uh, little spaces that we're thinking about them colonialist context, it seems to be like the space for a white European like painting, display, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And the way that you play this is kind of acknowledging it. And I really enjoy seeing where it's like rippled or like distorted okay. from oh. its addition. So I was wondering, yeah, what your ideas were with that sort of presentation. Um uh, yeah. I wasn't really thinking about all that, but it's, it's you know if I want to think that once you're dealing with, with canvas, you're dealing with a larger conversation about painting, right? Yeah. And that's kind of like the aptitude. Because the paintings on paper are an, a, what's the word, a hybrid of both of these things, drawing and painting. And it, you know, if, if, if you see my, my process in terms of gripping them, there are these kind of like instances where the paint is wet and very, very much paper. And, then the drawing becomes, you know, an act on top of that. But then, of course, no, I'm taking this thing on paper, which is kind of already a frame for it, and then putting it on canvas again. It's it definitely plays with both of it, right? Um, I mean, that's kind of like me just kind of carrying that whole thing through, um, and I'm not even thinking about just you know in terms of like how much percentage paint and how much percentage charcoal. I'm literally just thinking about um, can it still be painted on paper? Or can it still be, if, you know, if there was no canvas involved? I mean, like, even there's a piece that I have in March, March Gallery in New York, that they didn't want it on canvas. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, it's going to be less than what it's supposed <laughs> to be. No, that was the thought, right? But then, <laughs> but then, you know, it's like you just have to kind of not think about it in a hierarchy. You know, it's not, paper is not less than mm. canvas. It's just another medium. And that's kind of like just the attitude putting it on canvas. I'm like, yeah, 
it's a painting, but I'm gonna put it on canvas because I want it framed in a particular way, <laughs> you know. Uh, but it's not a hierarchy, definitely not. So thank you. That's a good question. <laughs> Any others? Um, I think this was quite successful. Thank you so much. Thank you for the really show. Awesome. Um, the show actually has been extended until tomorrow. It was supposed to close last <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, last Sunday, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, we decided to just give it another week. Um, the response has been really great, um, just yep. everywhere. Nice. Um, if so this is weird talking to like. Social media is weird, but like, if you all want to follow Le Show, do so on Instagram. Um, at he's easy to find. <laughs> um, if you need more information, just visit the link in our bio on Instagram, um, and everything is there. But um, hopefully, we will continue collaborating. Yeah, for sure. Um, in the future, but this is great actually seeing you without a mask. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, one last thing is, you know, I really appreciate the thought that has gone through in, you know, like your production of all of these paintings. And every time I talk to people who pass through the gallery, I'm really excited to just sort of like um, be that nerd, nerdy teacher that goes, okay, let's like break this down or let me try to break it down um, to give it some respect that um, the paintings deserve. Um, and I really respect that, um, that you put all this thought into your works. Um, and hopefully we can see more. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, wish you were here. Yeah. Uh, refreshments. <laughs> Um, Final words. Oh. <laughs> I'm always on words. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys get a refreshment? Uh, uh,